Welcome to One Mic. I'm your host, Country Boy. Today's episode is about Henry Black Dev Johnson. Henry Johnson was a United States soldier who, while on watch in the Argonne Forest in May 14, 1918, fought off a German raid in hand-to-hand -hand combat, killing multiple German soldiers and rescuing one of his own fellow soldiers while experiencing over 21 wounds. And if this is the type of content that you enjoy, please hit the subscribe button. Also, you can find more content like this at onemichistory.com and please consider donating to our Patreon page. But with that said, without further ado, let's get started. Henry Johnson was born in 1897 or 1892 in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Many of his documents have different birth dates, so the exact date of his birth is actually unknown. What we do know is that his family moved to Albany, New York while he was a child, and in his early teens, he worked as a red cap porter at the Albany Union Station on Broadway. A red cap is a worker who helps passengers carry their luggage and wore a red cap. In 1917, the United States declared war on Germany. At the time before the Selective Service Act introduced conscription, African-American volunteers were only allowed to join four all-black regiments in the Army and a few National Guard units. Henry Johnson enlisted in the United States military and joined the all-black National Guard 15th Entry Regiment, and they were soon called up into federal service and were redesignated as the 369th Infantry Regiment based in Harlem, which would be collectively known as the Harlem Hellfighters. Johnson and the Harlem Hellfighters were trained at the segregated Camp Wadsworth in Spartanburg, South Carolina. And as you would expect, they did not receive the warmest welcome from the locals. The locals felt like it was their job to teach these black New Yorkers their place in Southern society. The Spartanburg Chamber of Commerce even filed a protest with the governor of New York stating that the most tragic consequences would follow the introduction of New York Negroes from the North with their ideas into the community life of Spartanburg. Following one incident in particular, a member of the 369th was asked to remove his hat and when he didn't remove it quickly enough, he had the hat knocked off his head and when he stooped down to pick it up, he was kicked in the butt right out the front door. This level of insults from the locals was unrelenting and caused talk among the 369th of shooting up Spartanburg, but before violence could occur between the 369th and the locals of Spartanburg, the war department Department decided to send the 369th back to New York and then to France, even as their combat training had barely even started. In January 1st, 1918, the 369th Infantry joined the 185th Infantry Brigade in Brest, France. They were mostly being used as labor and as stevedores, building rail yards, repairing roads, and unloading ships. It was not long before the men began to ask their officers when they were going to be able to fight. The 369th Commanding Officers would attempt to try to plead their case to General John J. Purging, the commanding officer of the American Expeditionary Force, for their troops to see combat. General Pershing was never going to consider the idea of an all-black regiment in his army. Pershing himself made it clear that he considered black soldiers to be inferior to whites, and many U.S. soldiers simply refused to fight alongside black troops. But General Pershing did offer to loan the 369th to the French High Command attached to 161 Division in the French Army. The 369th would still be a part of the United States military, but their orders would come from French officers. African American soldiers have faced considerable harassment from white soldiers and even from the American Expeditionary Force themselves. The American Expeditionary Force released a pamphlet about black troops warning the French of their inferiority and that the troops had a tendency to commit sexual assaults. And once again, Pershing himself told the French that the black man lacks civil and professional conscience and that they were a constant menace to America. 
The thing is, the French army knew exactly what they were getting and they were excited about the idea. They had been using black troops in their military for almost a century. And by the time that America entered World War I, France had a black general and four black colonels. And because of their own positive experience with black troops, the French had no issue accepting black troops from America and paid little attention to Pershing's warnings. The French would send the 369th to the western edge of the Argonne Forest in the Champagne region of France. On the night of May 14, 1918, Henry Johnson and Needleham Roberts were, were part of a five-man patrol tasked with protecting a bridge in the Argonne Forest against German ambushes from around midnight to 4 a.m. At 2.30 in the morning, while the rest of the patrol was fast asleep, Roberts alerts Johnson to suspicious noises. Johnson states that he heard snipping and clipping, as he called it, of wire cutters on the perimeter fence. Johnson sent up a warning flare only to see that they were about to be attacked by 24 German soldiers. Soldiers tossed hand grenades at Johnson and Roberts and showered them with shrapnel. Roberts was badly injured, but continued to supply Johnson with their own grenades. Johnson tossed grenades at the German soldiers and after running out grenades, he grabbed his own rifle and fired into the darkness. Johnson was shot several times but continued to return fire, shooting until he shoved an American cartridge clip into a French rifle, causing it to jam. Now he was almost overrun with German soldiers as they reached the rim of his foxhole, used his rifle as a baseball bat to keep them at bay, and proceeded to beat one German soldier to death with his rifle stock until it splintered into pieces. Overwhelmed, he saw that the Germans were attempting to try to take Needleham Roberts prisoner and the only thing he had left was a bolo knife so he charged at the German soldiers before they could get a clean shot and stab one man in the head and the other in the stomach. At this point, reinforcement had arrived and Johnson had passed out after sustaining almost 21 injuries. He was taken to a field hospital and German forces were forced to retreat, leaving three men dead and almost a dozen wounded. Because of Henry Johnson's stubborn defense of the bridge that sent German soldiers running in retreat, the scrimmage was known as the Battle of Henry Johnson and would hit newspapers all over the United States. And this act of valor would earn him the nickname Black Death. Soon after, Johnson was promoted to the title of sergeant and even General Pershing called Henry Johnson's actions a notable instance of bravery and agreed that he deserved credit. Meanwhile, the entire French force in Champagne, France, lined up to see two Americans receive their decorations. Henry Johnson and Needleham Roberts both received the French Kill de Guerre, which is France's highest honor for battlefield bravery. It was the first time the award had ever been given to enlisted American soldiers, and Henry Johnson's award even included the Golden Palm, which is a symbol of extraordinary valor. Henry Johnson and his fellow Harlem Hell fighters arrived home in February 1919 and they were celebrated as heroes. They were honored in a parade up New York's Fifth Street. Thousands of spectators lined the route to watch Johnson lead nearly 3,000 troops in an open air car towards Harlem. Johnson was greeted by the mayor of New York, Alfred E. Smith, along with other officials when his train arrived in Albany, New York, and Theodore Roosevelt called him one of the five bravest Americans. But even being heroes did not free these black soldiers from racism. And the 369th was only given their own parade because they weren't allowed to join the official victory parade alongside returning white troops. Henry Johnson would also be discharged from the military in February of 1919, and despite his hero's welcome, which included discussions about a movie contract, proposals of a street being named after him, the army even used Henry Johnson's image to recruit black soldiers. He was permanently disabled from his wounds. He was never fully able to support himself in the post-war America. He attempted to resume his job as a red cap porter, but couldn't stand for long periods of time because his foot had been completely shattered in the war. Although he was a hero, when Henry Johnson objected to the mistreatment of black veterans, he was denied his own disability pay. In 1923, him and his wife divorced. He was without work, without a pension. He became an alcoholic and died penniless in New York in June 2nd of 1929. 
For decades after his death, Johnson's story remained mostly unknown. But starting in the 1990s, Johnson's story began to gain more recognition. Albany, New York erected a monument in his honor and a campaign was launched to get the United States government to recognize him for his service. This effort was spearheaded by his son, Herman Johnson, who was also a Tuskegee Airman in World War II. At this time, there was some question as to where Johnson was actually buried. In 2001, historians from the New York Division of Naval Affairs confirmed that Johnson had been given a burial with military honors at Arlington National Cemetery in July of 1929. But due to a data entry error, he had been listed as William Henry Johnson. In 2002, the United States Army awarded Johnson the nation's second highest military honor, the Distinguished Service Cross. Still, Henry Johnson's supporters continued a campaign to get Henry Johnson the recognition they felt he deserved, and they felt had only been denied to him based solely on the color of his skin. On June 2nd, 2015, Henry Johnson was awarded the Medal of Honor the United States' highest and most prestigious military decoration that is awarded to recognize U.S. military service members who have distinguished themselves in extraordinary acts of valor. Henry Black Dev Johnson was a hero of World War I. He joined the military to fight for democracy and to prove that African Americans deserved full citizenship. But even after his heroics and his crippling injuries, he couldn't escape racism or Jim Crow here in America. It took almost 90 years for Henry Johnson to get the full recognition that he rightfully deserved. Thank you. This has been One Mike. I'm your host, Country Boy. If you enjoyed this, you would like more stories like this, you can find more stories like this at OneMikeHistory.com. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, if you don't mind joining my Patreon page where you can support the channel. Thank you so much. Peace.